Hi, I'm Colin. I'm James. And welcome to Let's Talk Retro. And it's nearly the end of the month and you know what that means. Yes, it's pickups time. So just before we get into our pickups, we've got something we'd like to say, haven't we, James? Yeah, we need to say a big thank you to everyone who subscribes because we have now hit 1,000 subs, 1,000 subs, 1,000 subs. 1,000 subs. Yeah, that's amazing. I remember at the beginning of the year on New Year's Day, you sent me a little text message saying, Happy New Year, mate, and uh, the year of 1,000 subs. And I think it was probably meant a little bit tongue in cheek, but. We've done it. Yeah, thank, we're there. Thank you very much for watching. We do appreciate it. Yeah, thanks to everybody who's commented, liked, and uh, supported us. And uh, we, yeah, like you say, we really appreciate it, don't we? So, should we get into the pickups? Yes. What have you got? Well, first of all, I've got one that I forgot to show last month, and uh, it's for the uh, PlayStation One, and it's R Type Delta. Brilliant. Um, so, uh, loved, always loved the R Type games. Um, some people call this rare. I don't know whether it really is that rare. There you go. This is a nice clean copy. It's, uh, yeah, it's quite mint, isn't it? It's no damage on that case. I was getting a bit. Of, I was showing my cases up with a bit of furniture polish, a bit of Mr. Sheen oh, or right. something. Maybe a nice little tip. Make because what's wrong with Pledge? Well, no, you can use Pledge. Other, other, other brands are available. Yeah, are available as they say. But we uh, have Mr. Sheen in this household, I'm afraid. He has come up well. But um, yeah, all my PlayStation One games. I just give them a nice, that. nice little. I like. I always give everything a wipe down when I get anything. Yeah, me too. It's part not part of my collection until I've given it a clean. A sticky so, stuff remover. That's yeah. what I use. Well, again, again, I always find if you've got stickers, um, furniture polish is great mm. for getting them off as well. Oh, cool. You just put it on, spray it on, leave it for a little bit, and then just give it a rub, and it just normally just come off. So, but uh, yeah, so I like to um, just give them a little bit of a polish up and make them feel nice and sticky. The trouble is you end up dropping out. <laughs> so I mean, you put them off the shelf because they're so sticky. <laughs> But yeah, so um, I've given it a quick play. It was a game that I've always wanted, never actually had back in the day. And uh, it's, it's a really good shoot, as they say. Uh, mega hard, I must say that. It is really hard, I haven't got that far into it. Um, but it is the sort of game I always keep going back to. It was one of those ones where I find you have to play it for a little bit and you get mm. really cheesed off of it. Leave it for a bit, go back, and then you do get a bit further. Any good power-ups? Um, I must say I haven't got that far yeah. into it, to tell you the truth. Yeah, difficult? It's, yeah, but... Um, yeah, it is really good. It's sort of like a 3D effect to some of it and stuff. And so it's not just just book standard sort of um, side scrolling shooter, but it's it's good. So that's um, R Type Delta. I used to play it on the Game Boy. All oh, right, I didn't know it was on the Game Boy. Yeah. Yeah. So my p first pickup of the month uh, is for the PS4, and it's uh, <coughs> not retro. It is retro. The insane yeah, trilogy. Yeah, I mean they've. Yeah. There are, it's the uh, three, obviously everyone probably knows, the three Crash games been remastered. And everyone moans it's too hard. It is hard actually, I'll tell you the truth, but they say that the possibly... The feet are bigger, no smaller. No, I think it's the jumping physics, that's what oh, I've okay. seen somebody say. And I tend to agree with that because you had a jump, because obviously they were released over various sort of years, you had a different jumping physics for each game. And probably the best jumping physics was the, for the third one, obviously. Um, so they reckon they've probably taken the jumping physics from the third one and put it across all of the games because otherwise if someone new starts playing it and they start playing it then uh, they find there's a difference between each right. game. Uh, and then us older gamers have played it before when we play it obviously we really notice that it's all the same though but it used to be different. Um, and also probably the jumping physics for the first game um, were obviously um, sort of done for the the jumping physics for the first mm. game, so that, that's how the, the the maps were just sort of laid out for that for that jumping physics. So that's why you find it slightly different, and slightly harder. That's one theory I've seen going right now. I tend to agree with it. I might be wrong. Um, like you say, what have you seen? Some of the better feet. Someone, yeah, someone said, oh no, the feet are smaller. Crash, oh, right. Crash's feet are smaller. But again, this sold out absolutely everywhere, um, and people were starting to sell the city price prices on eBay and Amazon and stuff. I've seen it going for about forty quid. And it's 27 quid. All these other um, companies are going to think now, hey, what can we bring back? Yeah, hopefully, because I like the remakes. So, Rare Replay, now this. Yeah. And again, yeah, I, I've played through most of the first one now. Um, and again, it's still like a game like it used to be. You play it for a little while, you get a bit fed up with it. To give it a rest, you go back and you find you get a bit further somehow. I don't know, it's sort of 
a method that will always work for me. I don't know There's why. There's a guy I work with, and he's told me he's launched his controller twice. Yeah, I just showed the, the TV screen a lot the first weekend when I had that. Now, I'm not one for throwing stuff about, but yeah. I've heard it's hard. Why so, don't I have a PS4? Yeah, well my second pick up again is for PS4 and it's a retro game that's made a comeback and it's Micro, micro Machines. Now I have played this with you and... You don't like it do you? I don't, I'm sorry. It seems to be one of those Marmite games, people either yeah. seem to love it or they hate I it. Abs I'd be absolutely pissed off if I would bought it because I would have sold uh, it on eBay straight away but you love it. I, I love it, I love it, it so and uh, I've just friend, crap at it obviously that's why. My friend Dave loves it and Tony loves it. Kept coming last um, and got fed up with it. Yeah, but it's just a game you've got to practice, you've got to know the track, you've got to you sort of like know where you've got to go. Um, and people are saying there's not a one-player mode, but there is. If you go down to the uh, to the right-hand side, I can't remember what they call it now, the, the, the mode, I'll, I'll put a link up, I'll show a bit of footage showing you what it is. But um, yeah, it's um, there is a one-player, single-player mode, I've played it single-player. Not, it's not, admittedly, it's not much fun playing on your own, but Micro Machines never was. It was a... a a game where you got together with someone and actually played it, and that's what you've got to do with this. Um, and if you've, even if you've got like a PlayStation Plus account, and you can play it online. Mm. I still say it's not as fun as playing it with your friends. That's why I think me, Dave, and Tony have enjoyed it because we got together um, and played it together, and uh, you know, sticking a couple of um, AI sort of opponents as well. And it's it's a good game. It's only nineteen ninety nine as well. Yeah, that's I mean, good. What, what more do you want? I say. Not for me. Who's who's the voice again? Who does uh, the Brian Blessed. That's Welcome to Micro Machines! Enemy flag! Um, but yeah, I've thoroughly enjoyed it, and um, I know uh, Dan on uh, the uh, Retro Hour, he said the other day that he's played it and he's enjoying it. Uh, so yeah, don't be put off by the crap reviews, because yeah, it's but good. I personally hate it. So uh, the next pickups actually went out for a change, uh, normally I buy everything on eBay. I actually got my lazy ass out and about, went to Sirencester, which is a town not too far from where we live, and they've got one of these there. Hooray! Planet Games. Give us a thumbs up if you've ever been in one. I'm sure if you live in the UK you have. <laughs> um, or the southern UK. Well, the southern UK, yeah. It's the southern where they, they've got shops in. They have. Bath, Bristol, Chippenham, Sirencester, Dorchester, Eastleigh, Froome, Newbury, Stride, Taunton, Trowbridge, Warminster, Weymouth. And then it's got the red office, but it doesn't tell you where that is. It's got a phone number for it. Um, I thought actually it was called Pink Planet Games. But it used to be. But it's maybe they changed the name. Right? Sold right. or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, Planet Games. And I went in there and Siren System. I looked around. There's quite a lot of retro stuff. Um, not particularly cheap, but at least you can see what you're buying when you're in there. Um, they had some uh, Me Amiga games. I told you about that. The oh, other wow. week they had some Amiga games. Which was quite amazing. Um, they had some Dreamcast, uh, a few Mega Drive in the window, um, and they had a, a boxed Mega CD2, okay, which was, I think they bought about 80 quid for it, so not cheap. But If you haven't been in one, it's they sell a lot of um, DVDs, don't they? Yeah, the DVDs. And kids' as well. toys. Yeah, yeah. Fridget spinners. Fidget, uh, fidget, <laughs> fidget spinners and just. So, Stuff like that. Yeah, in there I picked up uh, Gran Turismo 6 for the PlayStation 3. I think that was eight ninety nine. dollars um, I think that's about the same sort of price it goes for on, on eBay most of the time. Do you have to do driving licenses? Um, I've not not tried it yet actually. There's, there's about 20 odd updates you've got to do. Oh wow. So it's mm -hmm. going to take a while to do all of those. Um, I've not actually got around to playing that yet to tell you the truth. But you used to have to do your licenses didn't you? Yeah, the semi struggled and yeah, I think, I think well, Tony's yeah. played it and he said to me that you can get so far through before you'd have to do your licences. Mm. 
Um, then I also bought this as a bit of a bargain, uh, Ratchet and Clank Nexus, bought that for 6 99 and I've seen that going on eBay for 15 to 20 quid, so it's quite a surprise. And I've never played a Ratchet and Clank game before, and I've actually played that and been really enjoying it. It's, uh, it's a really good game. And uh, I've been thinking about it for ages about whether I'd get the one on the PS4, so I possibly will be getting that soon. I'm enjoying this. I can't remember, what did it originally come out on? Was it? I don't know. PS1 the, or PS2? I think it was PS2 the first ones, I think. I might be wrong. Might be wrong. But uh, yeah, so I've been enjoying enjoying that. So it's a platform. Uh, sort of, yeah, sort of 3D platformy sort of thing. Uh, and then in there, they always have a special offer on. It just never seems to be, never ends, it's always on. Because they've got stacks of Xbox, original Xbox games, have they? and stacks of PlayStation 2 games, as you would expect. And they do uh, three for a fiver. My one local one doesn't. Doesn't it? They're tight know. as. Oh, perhaps they've not got they've got they've got stacks of games like that in or quite a lot. They've got mostly DVDs, <coughs> but And you've seen a bit of mix and match because I bought some in there before and I thought that was going to be charged at the full price of them because they weren't in together, but because they were still PlayStation 2 and Xbox games, they still gave me the three for a fiver. Uh, but this time I got all Xbox, original Xbox games because I wanted to sort of expand my original Xbox collection a little bit. And uh, so these were three for a fiver. And the first one is Blood Wake. Now this looks like a racing. It's yeah, so, it's sort of like a. a it's a it's a boat, boat racing sort of racing bomber thing. If you remember when we did our video where we looked at our. Um, remember when we did the video we looked at the ah, Vision Ah, this Xbox is a launch title magazine. It was in that on that. Never played and it. And you said you'd never seen it. And I said I played a demo of it. I'm sure when I got my original Xbox I had a demo of it. Stormfront Studios. And I've always wanted to have it and give it another go, so that's why I bought that one. Hey, that's cool. And then the other two I got were Prince of Persia games, uh, Prince of Persia Two Thrones. Oh yeah. And Prince of Persia Warrior Within. Funny thing with these as well, when you go in there with these, these back. these have always got the discs and the in the, the manuals in them. Oh. So yeah, you can so always they don't bother taking them out no. and storing them in there. But the good thing is you can check the disc look alright, yes. and you can check see whether the manual's in there, what the manual looks like. So I suppose they think you know who's going to come who's in and make the Xbox game. Yeah. yeah, but I suppose there's probably people that would. But Ubisoft. Yeah. So yeah, so it's uh, all those three for a fiver, which is not bad, I suppose. I mean, that's, that's good. Uh, so yeah. And then they all feel heavy, so I guess they've all got instructions. Yeah, they've all got instructions. Yeah, you know me, I've got to have my instruction manuals, I've got to have them complete. Uh, so one more that I'm going to show before we're going to go on to what you picked up, and then okay. we'll come back to a few more that I've picked up. Um, third one is one that uh, old Ben over at Game of Geek World is going to love, because if anyone who watches Ben's channel know that he's into his master system. And I think sure is. yeah, I think he said the other day there's going to be another because he's going for a, he's got his quest going to collect all the Master System games. I think he says there's going to be another video coming soon, so I'm going to be looking forward to that. I think he's got to sell some stuff before he can buy some more. Apparently, because he's now getting to the nitty gritty, he needs to get the more expensive games in. Mm. Probably after that copy, of, uh, that copy of uh, Buggy Boy. That is not a cheap game. No, it pops up on eBay quite regularly. Can't be that rare because it pops up on yeah. eBay quite regularly, doesn't it? Like, yeah, I, I've got a, a search save for it, and but it does come up quite often. But it's <coughs> stupid. 165 was the last time. Yeah. But so no. this is um, it's not actually a cartridge game. It's one of those Master System card games, which I've got a bit of a, hey. a thing for. Look at that. If you, you must have seen these guys, yeah. but if you haven't. There's a little ditty. And that's the seventh one I've got in my collection now. And there's not that many of them made. I'm not sure how many there actually was made. Um, it's got the original sleeve for the, the, the card and the manual. There you go. You must have seen these, but for those who haven't, it's a little memory card that only plugs into the original Master System. Yeah, and of course my Master System collection is quite small. The actual <laughs> Master System I've only got about three or four games for. I know what you're thinking as well. What's that? Also plugs into the converter on oh, the Mega yeah, Drive. Yeah, it's got yeah. a slot. So um, yeah, so my Master System collection is quite small. There you go. I've got more card games than I have cartridges oh. now. Don't shout at me for touching the contacts, please. There you go. Sega card. Funny you thing can was write your name on the back. Luckily, yeah. they haven't. Yeah. Are you going to write your name on this? No. You sure? Yeah. Definitely. What if you lend it out at school? You might. I'm not at school anymore. Well, okay. <laughs> Good, good answer. And uh, knowing it works, probably going to want to play that rubbish thing. 
But it might be good, I've never played right, it. Right, I can angry comments coming now. Have you played Transport it? Transport is a bit. I've never played it, so... Going back to the Master System, I just story... love how it's got a picture of the Ant holding the card. They're all like that, so I like that. That's yeah. great. I also like the checkered on, on the Master System games. I know Ben from Game of Geek Wheels says that's what he likes about the mm. artwork, because it's just something about that. It's just so simple. It, it just it just all looks so cool being practically the same. But as I said, a story, I don't know if I've ever told you about the story about the Master System, because I never had one uh, straight away. I had a Mega Drive, that was my first console. And then uh, when the, one morning when my dad had gone to work, uh, the, quite early in the morning, the, the, the doorbell went. And the postman was there, and that's when the post came early, because nowadays you can come any time of day. Um, if you're lucky. Well, yeah, I think I just came three o'clock yesterday, <laughs> so... Sometimes I don't get posts for days and days. <laughs> um, not knocking the post office, they normally get our games to us, and quite good. Actually, yeah, oh, my post, he says, oh, all your posts are sat because there's no one to deliver it. No. Um, but anyway, anyway, so the postman rang on the door and uh, my mum answered and she had a parcel come from my dad and said, well, I don't think he's ordered anything. And I was like, well, no, I know that he's, don't think he's ordered anything. So she waited till dinner time when he rang up from work to ask him whether he'd ordered anything because it might be a surprise for her or something, I think. And he said he hadn't ordered anything, so she opened it. And inside was a master system too. Um, and with compliments from the Sun newspaper. And my dad had entered a competition. Wow! And actually won a master system. He never told us he entered the competition. And he won a master system, so that was pretty cool. So Was it a guess the page uh, three model <laughs> no, I competition? Don't I don't know what I don't know how we, how we bought the I can't remember what it was, no, whether he answered. I think it's just a matter of just sending in your name and That's brilliant. So yeah, so it was the one that had um Sonic so, two? No, oh, the game Sonic. built in um so it's the, the Miracle Alice, World Alice world. Kid. Yeah, Alice Kid mm. in Miracle World or something yeah. like that. And I think I played that because we had a Mega Drive that we sold it on quite quick sort of thing. So never had Master System games really when I was a kid. So that's why Maybe my collection... Maybe kept it now. Yeah, well I've got one again now, but this time it's got Hang On, I think. Super Hang On built into it instead of that. <coughs> so, that's my pickups for now. I think you've got some to show us. I have, I have. And I've got... N64 game to start with, and it is Track and Field, or International Track and Field Summer Games. Now this was this came out in America as well. This is a PAL, obviously, but this came out in America as well. But it's called, oh, what was it called something else? Something very similar. I can't right. remember. I'll think of it in a minute. So it's Konami. It's um, got all sorts of summer games. There's swimming and weightlifting and pole vaulting and racing. And it says, go for gold with the only track and field title for N64. Mm. I guess they own the, the, they own the rights and <coughs> this was the only game they were going to... I don't think they're sold in big numbers, but you can get the car only cheap enough. Um, it's always on eBay, car only. Um, this is a box game and it's from Chill Out Games again, which are great. And I don't know if you remember, if you watched last time, they've got a box, proper box with packaging, loads of packaging, comes perfect. Tapes everything, you can't get water in it. Brilliant. Good Absolutely, job. that exactly how you should post games. But yeah. So have you played that? Is it with Button Basher? or uh, Never played it, never but played I can it. imagine it is a Button Basher. Yeah, I had it only car only. Just can imagine on the N64 there's a joystick waggle there. <laughs> yeah, you break your little <laughs> thing, but yeah, it's nice. It's you know, it's it's uh, not terrible. It's not uh, it's not battered. So yeah. yeah, well happy. I'll put that in a protector. Is there a manual? Yeah, manual. You can feel the weight. Oh yeah. I won't get it's the manual out because you'll start sniffing it <laughs> like you do. Right, next up, it's another N64 game and it's another sportish related. Now, leave a comment if you know where that price label is from. Can you guess? 39.99, big retailer, still around today. Leave a comment if you know. But anyway, do you you, remember, you must have seen those. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah get it? Remember his, Used to be a lot. A lot of times they're in cases because they were worried about getting stolen. But anyway, I'm not going to try and take the label off because I might neck of the box. But yeah. it is, and I'll, I'm, I'm definitely going to pronounce this wrong. Is it Wiley Wiley Country Club? It's a golf game. True golf classics. 
And now he's putting for birdie. Gary, it's time. <laughs> Gary, it's time. I'm trying to putt. Why lie golf on Nintendo 64 for people who put golf above all else? Yes! <laughs> Why lie golf? Only on N64. <laughs> Never played it. So there's only there must only be um well there's three golf games, isn't there? There's Mario Golf, this, and there's Japanese St Andrews Golf. Um so yeah, three games as far as I know on the N sixty four. There wasn't like an every, every everybody's golf or anything like that? No, nah, it's a Sony uh yeah. um IP. Right. But yeah, so it's not bad condition, little little wear and tear. This you get all day long on cart only, but not so not so often boxed. And I think I think this is an eBay purchase. Pretty sure this is eBay. I think it was about twenty quid. Um, unfortunately, a little bit of tape. They tape. In fact, they taped both ends up because that's still got a bit of tape on there. And I had to. I gently removed it and then I had to cut it because it was starting to rip the box but now whether it was like that originally or even the um, the seller might have gone oh don't the flaps open and put tape on but absolutely under no circumstances ever put seller tape on game boxes please um, no instructions unfortunately you can hear it rattling and it's one of these boxes that has the built in inserts so I prefer it when you've got the removable yeah, ones because yeah. if you Knacker you can get another one and replace it but so yeah anyway enough about that it's a golf game not played it but you can play four player so you no know, yeah. that's always a good thing there's not a great deal of games that are four player well there's some but you know get your mates around and play some golf um next up we have another N64 this is Chef's Love Shack Somewhere, someone tries to party alone. Would you like some more tea, Polly Prissy Pants? Yes, yes, I would love some tea. Don't let this happen to you. Join the party at South Park Chef's Love Shack, the video game where you and your friends get down for some major four-player fun with the love gourmet himself. Oh, Chef! So get on over to the shack. It's one big multiplayer love-in. Comedy Central's South Park Chef's Love Shack, the video game. Ooh, naughty. From acclaim. Love, 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 love. Now, never played it. It's bound to be crap, I would think. Mm -hmm. There's a warning message. This game is recommended for mature audiences only. It contains adult language and content, but it doesn't have a rating. So it's just got a little warning to be safe. And it says here, it's one big multiplayer love-in. And there's a picture of a monkey, and <coughs> there's the garrison, and there's a massive Cartman. It just look like, looks like loads of little sub-games. Um, but yeah, it's got an ES, ELSPA, so it's the it's like the guideline on the, what they recommend. So if you're for parents or whatever, back in the day when you're looking at getting your, your child or grandson or whatever a game, you can have a look and... It tells you what kind of uh, age it's for, and this is 15 plus, but there's no 15 actual certificate. It's got tape on the end, it looks like it's been creased, and in fact, when I got this, there was tape on every corner, which I've removed. Some of it's still there, but it was just in, what, they just wrapped it in like copier paper. Right. I'm surprised it's not more. They wrapped it in copier paper, stuck, some, stuck a stamp on it, and just wrote the address, and was that an eBay job, was yeah. it? Yeah, but I think that was about twenty, about twenty-five quid. So not not that cheap, and the condition is a bit poo. the The photos weren't great, but I took a gamble. So yeah, that's it. Not played it, so sorry. I can't really talk about it. But South Park, there there isn't really a great South Park game, is there? South Park Rally, of course, but that's not. Yeah, I don't know. I played the South Park so. game. No, but not for everyone. But yeah. Anyway, so pick up. 
boxed. And last game is another N64, so sorry for being all N64, so apologies if you're not a massive fan of the system. But it is John Romero's, got the label sticking out here, or instructions. I'm going to pronounce this wrong as well because I'm totally illiterate. Dakitana? Dakitania? I've never seen that before, never, never, never even knew that existed, so... It's a bit bad. Now, I don't really know much about this, unfortunately. I've got it on car only, but I bought it on... Someone gave it 90% though, by the way, though, so... Yeah. that? Yeah. Um, N64 magazine. Right. The unofficial... I don't think they did too many of them, did they? But... I don't know. Let's see what it says. In 2455 AD, Cage Mish Mishmana used the magical powers of Dakitania, the most powerful sword ever forged, to alter time and establish himself as Supreme Dictator. Supreme Dictators! There's one of those around today! Um, hi if you're over in North Korea. Um, yeah, probably not because you don't get YouTube because they sense everything. Um, you are Hiro Miyamoto, one of the few people on Earth who knows what happened. It's up to you to find the corrupt dictatorship right the wrongs that have inflicted the world. Mm. So not a bad idea. John Romero is famous for all kinds of films and numerous games of course. John Romero, big, any idea, big? Doom was it? Yeah, like Doom, of course, yeah. yeah. Doom but, fame. So this came out, I think this is before or after Doom on the N64, but... Uh, so I never knew that existed. So of, uh... Yeah, some you showed it to me just before we started filming this. And I screenshots. Never, never knew it. There. And it's a one to four player. It's cool. Box has been battered a bit. And this was quite well. Yeah, there is. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. Oh, nice. Oh, the manual is pretty good condition, isn't it? It's pretty minty. Get is sniffing. It? Yeah, he does do it. He does sniff it. Yeah, it's mint. Yeah, it's good. I'd say that's it's even in the bag, isn't it? The original bag, by the way, in the yeah. cartridge. I do like it when they... Yeah, there you go. I do like it when they keep the polythene. Yeah. Never throw any of your game packaging away. Right, so I'll go on through my final pickup, shall I? And uh, if you watched last month, you know that I'm at the moment concentrating really on my PlayStation collection. Um, so it was probably the only console where I didn't keep all the games I had. I sort of sold them mm. or traded them in. Most of the other consoles, I kept the games and shoved them in the loft and said, one day I'm going to have a gaming museum or something like that. And uh, little did I know that one day lots of us would have games rooms and stuff. So I pulled it all out of the loft and mm. got my games room now. Um, so the first thing I picked up was this. And it's the Grand Theft Auto uh, Collector's Edition. I um, don't think you knew much about that, did no, you? I didn't you? even know there was one. I guess, I guess there kind of was one. Yeah. But... Yeah, so it's, so, was it all three? Yeah, yeah it's the... Well, it's Grand Theft Auto, Grand Theft Auto 2 and uh, the London missions, London, yeah. uh, you know, the extra missions. Um, uh, now, you often see them on eBay, people selling them, and they haven't got this cardboard yeah. sleeve, you know, or the cardboard sleeves are really okay. bashed up. Um, you just see them being sold in this, it's like a double CD case. Yeah, that's great. And um, this is complete with all the maps and all the manuals and everything inside. And you normally see these, they can often go up to people trying to buy them now for about sort of 40, 50 quid. And like I said, they often haven't got that. Mm. Well, that's all sort of smashed, or sort of creased up and sort of, you know. Uh, and this one came on, I've been looking, look, told you a little while ago I was looking for one. And this one came on for buying now, 20 quid delivered. Brilliant. So seeing though it was in pretty good condition, I sort of weighed it straight in and bought it. Um, good thing with PlayStation games now, they're starting to really ramp up in the prices mm. and you're sort of, do I sort of leave it and wait for the prices to drop? Are they ever going to drop? Are they just going to keep going up and up? Yeah, who knows? Um, so you sort of you don't know what to do. Uh, another one which just people say this is often quite rare. This is Namco Museum. This is volume three. I think there's five volumes altogether. Um, these all seem to go um, for quite a bit of money. People say they're rare, but they, they pop up. Quite regularly. Namco. Uh, but I think it's just they didn't sell very well here in the UK apparently from what I've heard. Um, you see these going for up to 50, 70 quid as well. Wow. Um, and there's some on actually eBay for the same price I bought this for 20 quid. So 
Uh, is it just volume three that's the most expensive? No, I think they're all, they all seem quite expensive. They all seem to fetch between sort so of there's only three, 40 and so five, five. There's five? Yeah, it's oh, five, wow. yeah, apparently. And this one's got um, Dig Dug on it, Galaxian, Miss Pac-Man, some game I've never heard of, which I can't pronounce. It's like Faison or something like that. Yeah, Faison. Faison, yeah. Uh, pole like Position, yeah, Pole Position 2, and... This other thing, what's that? Yeah, it's hard to read. Yeah. Oh, sorry. This thing says a person. Worst there. eyesight. Uh, Collection pulls of that man. De Drew Tagger? Yeah, Drew Tagger. I've never heard of that. Sorry if we got it wrong. Yeah. But yeah, so six six games, I think it is, on that. But again, so I've got to get the other five volumes of that yeah. now at some, some stage. Hopefully not at 70 quid each. Um, another game that I picked up, uh, I think I paid 20 for this as well. And again, this is one that people say you don't see that often, it's Starblade Alpha. Brilliant. Um, I played some of that the other day, didn't get very far on it again, but it was really good. It's almost a bit, reminded me of a more up-to-date sort of Star Wars, you know, the Vector Star Wars game. It was sort of 3D spacey um, and seemed pretty good. And uh, It's got, um, as, this, as you, everyone knows, they've got the... The release number. Look, it's 34. Oh, yeah. That's really so low. That's quite low, yeah. So, again, people say this is quite rare, um, but... It was it launch, I wonder? I can't, not, I can't it remember it. must have it. been shortly after. Yeah, I can't remember it when, it when it launched. When I bet you that sold really well in Japan. They love... Yeah, but I've had a quick go. I'm going to go back and give that another go, because I was quite enjoying that. And, last but not least... I think I bought these as a bundle, but I can't remember how much I paid for them though. Um, but these are getting expensive as well, a bit like the Crash games were, are, um, and that's the Spyro games. So Spyro 1, 2 and 3. Um, and these cases are a bit, there's a few cracks in some of them. They've all got the manuals. Okay. Um, I showed you earlier, didn't there's one summons for some reason. <laughs> I had to take the hologram off. Why? Just, it looks Why? like they've tried sanding it down or Why something. Why would you do that? So I'm uh, probably going to get a new case for that at some point. Buy a cheapy game and replace it. Yeah. But yeah, this Spyro games they're going for sort of like sort of twenty to twenty five quid now or more. So so I can't remember. I bought them all together for someone because I just thought it'd just be be easier than trying to buy them. Um, I honestly can't remember how much I paid. But this is the first one I've got here. I I'm pretty. I haven't played the other two, but I know I played this one. So yeah, so I think that's basically our pickups for the month. Well, you've um, got more of a selection, mine's just all in Just all in yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know how you go about it. Do you, I was thinking the other day, what, what, I was wondering what other people do, so perhaps you can let us know in the comments. How do you, if you, each month, do you just go out and buy what you feel like? Or do you do like what I do? I just always sort of like, have a look at how much money I've got coming in, have a look at what my outgoings are. Um, try and keep a bit of money back for a rainy day or something crops up mm. and sort of think, well, I can spend maybe £100 this month or 50 quid this month, depending on how much sort of like outgoings I've got sort of thing. What do you do? Do you just... I'm kind of like, oh, oh dear, I've already bought it. Yeah, but you sell a lot on eBay, don't you? You often sell things on eBay, don't you? So do you yeah, keep, do you keep the money one, from I'm, that yeah. and, and use the money from that? I'm not, I'm not as good as you are. Yeah, so let us know what you do. Do you, do you have a budget each month or do you just nearly really buy what you want to buy or do you just know you can just afford to buy a couple of games? Or? Sometimes you see something and you think that's that's well underpriced and, yeah, and just I'd be silly it. to not buy it but yeah. then, you know, sometimes you can afford it and sometimes you can't. Yeah, so I say I do a budget, sort of like, and sort of budget, try to budget myself and not go over budget each mm. month. Um, just depends on how much I've got spare each month, you know. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, that's the end of our, the pickups for this month. We'll be back uh, with more videos and another pickups video at the end of uh, August. The year's cracking on already. I know, it's yeah. going to be Christmas before you know it. Yeah, it'll be Christmas stuff in the shop soon. Um, where I work, I work at a place where we make wooden jigsaw puzzles. And Christmas is already done. Christmas <laughs> is in stock. Wow. Um, the Christmas catalogue is being made as, as we speak. I mean, I've been spent all summer already printing Christmas pictures and You're stuff. You're Christmas out already. I am, yeah. And it's only sort of like just coming up to all this. But anyway, so guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you've enjoyed the pickups. If you've got anything you want to comment on, then please do. We'd like to hear from you all. Um, if you've liked the video, give it a like. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, then please subscribe as well. But until next time, what are they going to do, James? Keep it retro. Yeah, as always, keep it retro, guys. And we will see you again very soon.